Hello, we'll continue with the idea of numbers. In the previous clip, I've talked about rational numbers. Now, rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a whole number divided by a whole number. So for example, it can be, say, 1 over 2, 0 0.2, 3, and so on. So all this can be written as a number, a whole number divided by a whole number. For example, 0.2 can be written as 2 over 10, 3 can be written as 3 over 1, even though they don't look like um, a number over a number at first. Now, there is another type of number which cannot be written as a number over a number. These are called irrational numbers. <clears throat> now, irrational number is slightly harder to understand. They're, it's actually a bit more abstract. Because the numbers that we are most familiar with tends to be fractions or decimals or whole numbers. And as you can see, if I have a decimal, I can always write it as a fraction. So, can we think of some numbers that cannot be written as a fraction? One simple example is the square root of 2. Now if you take a calculator, you can calculate an answer for the square root of 2. And you'll end up with a number that goes 1.41 and so on. And on your calculator, you'll get an answer that goes up to maybe 10 decimal places or so. If you look at the number on the calculator, you can imagine that you can also write that as a number over another number because after all this is just a decimal. I can always rewrite it as some kind of a fraction. But actually, the actual decimal for the square root of 2 does not stop at the 10 or so decimal places that you would see on the calculator. It carries on forever. And the only reason why the calculator shows you just 10 decimal places is because that's all the places that a calculator can show. Calculator cannot show you all the decimal places that go on forever. So it gives you up to maybe 10 decimal places. So actually it goes on and on and on and on. If, if you want to write the square root of 2, if you want to find the square root of 2 as a decimal answer. And there is actually no way that you can write um, the square root of 2 as in the form of a fraction. Now there's actually a mathematical proof for that. And we have to be careful here. It doesn't mean that if a number goes on forever, it cannot be written as a rational number. I'll give an, a, an example in a moment. But I, at this point, we shall not go into a proof as to why the square root of 2 cannot be written as a, 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 as a fraction. But I'll just give this as an example um, to know. Now, as another example, of irrational number is pi. Now pi is a number that we will get from the, the circle. If you imagine a circle, and if you think of the diameter of the circle, if you think of drawing a circle and drawing the diameter, 
the straight line across it. Not a very nice circle. But if you take the length of the circumference of the circle and divide it by the diameter, the answer you get is pi. And it's the same answer if, if whether you draw a big circle or a small circle. All right? Because if you draw a bigger circle, you have a bigger circumference, but you also have a bigger diameter. And when you divide them, you find that you always get the same answer. We'll talk about this um, later on when we look at geometry. So anyway, if you do this, you'll find that pi, this circumference over the diameter, this is a very special number, you find that pi is actually equal to 3.1415 and so on. Right, it's, um, again, if you can do it precisely somehow, you'll find that the decimal, please go on forever. And it can never be written as a fraction, as a whole number divided by a whole number. So pi is also an irrational number. Now at this point I should mention a common um, fraction that is used to represent pi. Now you might have seen 22 over 7 being used as pi when you learn about calculating circles before this. Now 27 or 22 over 7 is roughly equal to 3.14. So it's actually an approximate value. 22 over 7 is a simple fraction, easy to remember, and we can use it to say roughly that this is equal to pi. But actually, 22 over 7 is not exactly equal to pi. Although we can use it to calculate um, things about circles, we should remember that it's just, just a rough number. Okay. So having looked at two examples of irrational numbers, um, let me look at this idea of a decimal place going forever. So we look at more about decimal places and fractions later on. But this idea of a decimal place going forever, I should emphasize that it doesn't mean that if a decimal number goes on forever, it is irrational. It can, you can also have a rational number that has um, decimal place going on forever. For example, if I look at 1 over 3. Now if you, again, take out your calculator and calculate 1 over 3 in decimal, the answer that you'll get, you'll see, is 0 0.3333333 and it goes on until the last place in the, on your calculator display. But actually, it goes on forever. Right? To be very precise, the decimal form of one third goes on to infinity. We call this a recurring decimal. So in this case, we have an example where the decimal place goes on forever, but it is not an irrational number because it's actually one over three. It can be written as a fraction, as a number over a number. So this particular um, recurring decimal is called, uh, it, it is a rational number. It can be written as a fraction. So which means that, um, well, we, what actually happens is that if you have a decimal number that keeps repeating itself, you can see that this is a very simple repeating pattern. It's just three going on forever, but you can have more complicated pattern. But as long as the pattern keeps repeating itself, then it can always be written as um, a fraction. So again, at this point, I shall not go into a proof for this. We'll have a look at that in a later clip. All right, and uh, just to wrap this up, now we have looked at um, rational numbers, irrational numbers. Um, we have looked at whole numbers, natural numbers. 
And later on, we are also going to look at numbers that are negative, that has a negative sign in front of it. So all of these numbers, just to conclude this part, uh, is called real number. I'll just write this out. A real number. So it's given the name of a real number, and when you see the, the word real number, it just means all of these numbers that you see here. So whole number, natural number, rational number, fractions, decimals, irrational numbers. So all of these belongs to this big family called the real number. Now, but before you think that real number includes all possible sorts of numbers, I should mention that it does not. There, is, there are other types of numbers, right, which are actually different from, from all these familiar numbers like whole numbers and fractions and even positive or negative numbers. But these are not numbers that we would look at at, um, at, at this level. So I will stop here for now. See you next time.